Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk, to my talk, um, uh, Security at Your Fingertips, a dive into Marshmallow's uh, new uh, fingerprint and key store APIs. Um, I think some of you, or at least some of you, have like, uh, uh, like a new phone in their pockets, which is like and running Android Marshmallow or later. So I think it's kind of interesting for you. And yeah, let me start with the obligatory About Me slide. So yeah, that's me. It's Frederick, uh, I'm Frederick Schweiger. I'm a computer science student sitting there at 30,000 uh, feet at the edge of a plane. And if I'm not like doing skydiving, I'm mostly like going to work um, as a student employee with the mobile guys here at Trivago. And when I'm not doing anything of both, you will probably find me at university. So yeah, cryptography. Cryptography is such a cool, uh, cool sounding word, but unfortunately so many people are getting it wrong and not for nothing like like broken or no cryptography is is one of the top 10 uh, um, yeah mobile risk for 2014 and in 2014 and 2015 and it wasn't really like in the in the top 10 it was always in the top top three or top four and yeah hand on your on your heart uh, whoever used like the android key store provider or some encryption in in their app like to store user data or user information user passwords yeah at least a few of you so um the question i i want to answer in this talk is how can i like as an android developer um yeah store my user sensitive information securely in my app so, and this is like an elementary problem each of, on, each of us will have or already got. So if you want to secure information like login data or like uh, tokens or whatever. And uh, until now there was n not a that reliable way to do this. Um, but fortunately there is like uh, the Android key store. But well, what does it do? Yeah, it stores keys the secure way. And, but let's start at the beginning. Most of us provide like system services um, to s securely store these authentication keys, and there's no need um, for the for developers to implement them by themselves. So Android 1.6 had like a credential storage for VPN and Wi-Fi, but unfortunately. Um, this whole storage wasn't accessible uh, by apps themselves. So public key infrastructure was um, was done by like via the settings app, but unfortunately, if you wanted to um, build an app by your own, uh, it wasn't possible like to use any uh, certificate in uh, placed inside this um, store. Android 4.0 finally introduced like the public keychain API, which made possible like to install um, this this type of certificates, and it's, it was not possible like to access this system credential store. And unfortunately, all these keys were like system-wide shared. So if you wanted to have an application which only used like um, an app private key, so only for your private server, and you didn't want another company or another app to use this certificate, this wasn't possible. And additionally to that, this wasn't the nicest solution because in the end you just had like an intent, you were able to fire, and then there popped up the system dialog where you could select um, this, this whatever, like, uh, yeah, certificates and all this kind of stuff. And if you think about, like, this, that not every, every user is, like, has, has a technical background, it's not the best user experience for them. So in Android 4.1, 4, 4 they finally introduced, like, the Keymaster Hall, so it's, that, there was a huge change, like, under the hood in the Android architecture. And 4.3 finally introduced, like, the Android Key Store, and the Android Key Store is not, like, another Android-specific API, like um, the keychain. Uh, it's more based on the, the um, JCI arch architecture, so you can use all the all Java, uh, Java um, yeah, APIs to, yeah, uh, work with, with the Key Store. And... Yeah, this key store finally supports like hard hardware back credential storage, like in trusted environments. And the first device was the Nexus Four, uh, Nexus Four, and these app, app private keys were now possible through this impl implementation. Unfortunately, uh, this implementation wasn't 
so clear to every developer and sometimes the key data got wiped or it was broken when the user changed like their the lock pattern or the passwords or whatever and then the key data was corrupted and the people weren't you as a developer wasn't weren't able to to use this cert certificate anymore and now finally android 6 and uh, android m improved this drastically and they changed everything under the hood and re-implemented it. It, it. I think there was a completely rewrite um, inside like the the key key master and key store thing. And yeah, this talk will focus on on the JCI um, key store provider. And yeah, so maybe someone of you has already worked with the key store API. I don't know. So you may know like the key pair generator spec class. So if so, you can like forget about it because it's deprecated since API level 23, and it's now called the Keygen Parameter Spec class. So the Keygen Parameter Spec class um, implements the algorithm parameter spec uh, for the key pair generator or the key generator, and in the end, the key generator uh, and key pair generator are just generator classes, uh, uh, engine classes which are capable of generating private and the related public key material, material um, utilizing the algorithm um, that they were initialized with. And the whole thing is instantiated by the um, key, key game parameter spec builder. Um, yeah. And this builder determines like the authorized use of the key, if user, user authentication is required or not, and what operations are authorized, like signing, decrypting, or encrypting, and with what parameters, like only particular padding schemes or digits, and the key uh, key's validity, validity start and then dates. So let's just dive into a short example um, on how this works. To generate like the symmetric key, we have like the key generator class, which will be instantiated um, with the uh, yeah, um, key property key algorithm AES and the Android key store. And after that, uh, we have uh, we, uh, we create the key um, camera, parameter, key gen parameter spec builder class, and we pass um, our alias of the key and our purposes if you if you want to encrypt or decrypt key material it's very important to have like um, to specify all the purposes you want to like if you want to decrypt or encrypt or to sign um, because if you want to use that key the key store implementation only lets you use the key for this specified uh, purpose and here this is how everything works. It's just a simple builder pattern. So you can set like the key size to 256 bits, um, the block mode and the encryption padding. So it's like all this um, yeah, encryption um, specific stuff. And after all, you just say key generator dot in it uh, with the builder build and key generator dot generate key and the key is generated. And now we would have like the my awesome secret key or one stored inside our key store. Um, the equivalent for like an RSA key would look like this. It's just like the same, except that we have like the key property for key algorithm R R RSA and um, the, um, the key property purpose sign and like a calendar for an, an start and end date because every every uh, um, key inside the key uh, key store needs like um, a valid certificate and it's creates it by, by its own, but you can replace it with, um, with a signed certificate from the certi uh, certificate authority later. So yeah. So after that, we successfully created my awesome secret key, 01. And if you want to encrypt something, it's super like straightforward. We again, we have like, uh, we try to get an instance to the key store with the Android key store provider. And after that, um, we have this all relict of the <laughs> Java cryptography API um, where we have to call dot load even if we don't have like an input stream or whatever um, to load it with. But yeah, this is like the API of the uh, JCA. Um, and then we get the secret key from the key store and instantiate a cipher. So we say secret key, uh, key store, get key, my awesome secret key, 
And yeah, after that, we get the instance to our cipher with the parameters we specified in our builder. And after that, we can simply like initialize the cipher and encrypt and yeah, decrypt the plain text and finally have this encrypted bytes array there. The same, it's, it's, it's more or less the same for like uh, decrypting all the stuff. Um, it just changes like the last row where we are um, uh, initializing the cipher with the decrypt mode and the secret key and the uh, initial initialization vector which was generated when we like encrypted our bytes. And after that we say just cipher to final and we have the decrypted bytes again there. So the key advantages of the new key store are uh, it's like an OS provided safe for all your key material uh, like uh, keys and certificates. And we have like uh, the hardware backed cryptography and for uh, and a secure, uh, secure storage and a trusted execution environment. So even if your device is like compromised by a hacker or you have like uh, super user rights uh, or doesn't matter, um, all the key material isn't, isn't able to be like extracted from the device because it never leaves the device. And now we can reliably and securely create uh, and store app private keys, which was able like from Android for, for the three um, and upwards. But now um, they improve the whole API and the reliability of the thing. And yeah, they added uh, support for some different like algorithms. You can look it up at the at the Android um, documentation for RSA, like elliptic curves, IES, and HMAC keys. So yeah, trust on here, trust on there, and trust on everywhere. It's like currently 80 to 90 percent of all the devices already have like this uh, trusted execution environment from Qualcomm. They call the Trust Zone. It's currently used for like digital rights management to play this kind of media. And the cool thing is that actually like 80 to 90 percent are already like having this this kind of um, um, chip or in this case, I think it's just like a different privilege level in the CPU. And the cool part is that this is a requirement of Android N. So every device which will be shipped with Android N um, has like a trust zone enabled um, CPU. So you can store all your key material inside it in the secure way. But as we all know, like the authentication is a bad user experience and we want to get over it. Uh, so we're living in 2016 and Google is already like inventing self-driving cars and bringing the internet out to, out to everyone with, with balloons and finally they introduced um, fingerprint support on Android. But let's start there at the beginning. Authentication, yeah, is annoying and is time consuming, comes up too often and almost 50% of, of all Android users um, do not have a lock screen enabled because of that. Because if you just like pull out your pocket, you would just want to check your, your whatever, your, the, the weather or just your bank account balance. You always have to authenticate in, in every app and this is what, what the users dislike. And the cool part of it, uh, you can now um, integrate the authentication process inside like um, with, the, with the unlock process of the device. So if I pull out my, the device out of my pocket, um, I can check with the key store if the user recently authenticated. And if it says yes, I can just like skip the login screen or the authentication screen in my app. So this is a really great way to improve the, the user experience there. So yeah, with these two methods, if you use it on the, on the builder I just showed to you, uh, you can just set like set user authentic requ uh, authentic authentication required and set user authentication valid valid duration seconds to something. So if you're just saying, yeah, let's say 15 seconds or 30 seconds, um, when you're just like in this time span, you can just get the key material uh, which which is created like in the key store um, without like authenticating again. And that's pretty cool. I, tell, I show you how it works. You just have your builder pattern there and you add this to yeah, uh, parameters. And after that, you can in this try and catch um, clause where you usually would like initialize and decrypt um, your data. You have like another catch clause and you can catch the user not authenticated exception there. And then you can say, yeah, the user is not authenticated. So let's do something there. 
so we could um, like show the user an authentication screen uh, from the um, from the operating system, and this is called the create confirmed device credential intent. And you can also like customize this whole thing, and this looks like this uh, in your in this app. This is by the way a demo app you can download on GitHub today. And this is how it looks like if you want to encrypt or decrypt something and you're not authenticated. We get like this default lock screen behavior where the user can authenticate with their pattern, their password, or like with fingerprint. So you already have like the fingerprint option in, built in there if you don't want to yeah, build your own uh, user interface. So and, and on uh, activity result, you um, check if the result is okay. And um, yeah, if the system says the user recently authenticated, you just try it again, try it again to um, get the key, initialize the cipher, and then try to encrypt or decrypt uh, the data again. And then it should work without throwing the user not authenticated exception. So in the end, authentication just got easier because you don't even have to show like the authentication screen, which I just told you. You can just like pull the pull, your, pull the phone out of your pocket and go in and go inside your app and skip all that. Just imagine it if you if you're like a bank and you want um, yeah have like very user sensitive information like bank account information or how much money you just spent the last night or whatever. And this is pretty cool because um, the user has like an intent to just check your the his or her like bank account balance or whatever, and he can just pull out uh, his or her phone and go directly to the app without authenticating again. And authentication just got stronger because authentication is now tied like to app secrets, so we can um, yeah authenticate the uh, with the users and have the key store. Um, there, and all this credential verification is now that does not happen in the in this um, secure environment or like trusted execution environment. So, all this encryption stuff happens directly inside um, this chip, and even if the system is compromised, yeah, you can't interfere with it. So, but if you want to do like a more easier way, or you want to implement your own user interface, there's also the fingerprint authentication. And the cool thing about fingerprint authentication is that the authentication is now a lot easier for the users, and it's even more faster. And we have this con consistent authentication flow in your own app if you provide your own user interface. And what's cool is that on Nexus devices with the fingerprint reader, with Nexus imprint, um, yeah, this lock screen adaption for a secure lock screen uh, went from like 50% to over 90%. So many more users are currently like using a lock screen and device encryption by because of the the fingerprint reader and this is pretty cool because it's fast and the, the users like to interact with it and by the way keep in mind if the device doesn't have like a fingerprint uh, sensor yet there's also the smart lock feature from google uh, which currently re reduces this lock screen or authentication prompts by 50 percent so only every second time there, uh, you have to authenticate on your mobile phone um, yeah, when uh, the user has enabled smart lock, like this uh, detection if you're wearing your phone with you or you're just having um, Android Wear Watch connected to your phone. So, but the key concept of like fingerprint authentication is that you can build your own dialogues for it and you can adapt it to your authentication flow and the user does not have to leave your app. So you can simply click the um, proceed to checkout or buy or whatever button, sign in button, and then your dialogue or whatever shows up, or it doesn't even need to be a dialogue, you could also like implement it in your uh, activity. And then you can just like tap the sensor and then you're authenticated. So. Make it really easy, use fingerprints. What you need is like a fingerprint reader, a device running Android Marshmallow or later, and a user who has set up um, yeah, a secure lock screen and of course enrolls some fingerprints. But this thing is optional because we can all, always force the users to enroll one. So yeah, <laughs> fingerprint manager. This is like um, the class you, you have to use if you want to implement fingerprint access on your phone. Um, it's like a system level service like any any other service and uh, coordinates all the access to to the fingerprint uh, mechanisms 
And yeah, you need to use the permission, uh, use fingerprint uh, in your Android, Android manifest. And fortunately, it's not like um, um, a critical permission, so you don't have to prompt the user to allow access to your fingerprint. And yeah, this is pretty cool. So in the end, yeah, you just like have the code like this, the fingerprint manager, and say get system service, and then you're done. You have a reference to the um, fingerprint manager, and the fingerprint manager, al manager also provides methods to check for device compatibility. Uh, compatibility, like um, uh, is hardware detected or has enrolled some fingerprints, and if not, you can always say yeah, please go back and. Check to uh, check these settings and enroll some fingerprints, or when it, uh, when he does when the device doesn't have like fingerprints or a fingerprint sensor, um, then you can always say yeah. Unfortunately, you don't have it, but we could you could also like use the lock screen approach there. And this class is also available as a compact version. So if you're running Android uh, like uh, 22 uh, uh, API level 22 or 21, you could use the compact class. And then it says, yeah, there's no fingerprint manager or fingerprint reading available because the API level is like 23 or higher. So yeah, the fingerprint manager. <clears throat> um, the most important um, method there is the authenticate method. And it's like the last of those three. You can like check the device compat compatibility and authenticate. And the first thing you have to pass over is um, the crypto object. Um, a cancel signal, which is nullable, some flex, which which should be always or should be always null, null uh, zero. Um, a fingerprint manager authentication callback, which you have to yeah implement, and a handler. And the handler is used um, um, for where like the fingerprint callbacks are called on which threads. So so yeah, the fingerprint manager crypto object is more or less a wrapper class for the crypto object supported by the fingerprint manager and has just these three simple methods like get cipher, get Mac or signature. So it's pretty straightforward there. And the authentication callback provides like the, the whole callback structure. And you have these methods. You can like implement uh, the authentic authentication succeeded where you get like this um, authentication result and this result simply gets you uh, contains like this uh, fingerprint uh, manager crypto object uh, where you can get your cipher from or whatever. And the other, th other three methods like on authentic authentication help um, with the different codes are called when you just like, or when the user just swiped or tapped the, the whole sensor for a uh, too short time or there's another error like a uh, dirty sensor. And authentication error is called when there's just an, an error or, or the whole um, yeah um, authentication stopped. And uh, on authentication failed is called when the user um, just used like a different finger, or whatever. So the finger wasn't like um, yeah recognized. So yeah, how does it work? On the authentication succeeded, you can simply like get the crypto object from the result and then decipher and work with it there. So if you just like set the authentication required um, to, your, to your key in the key store and you say the duration seconds or set the duration seconds to zero, then you always have to use your fingerprint to authenticate. This is pretty powerful and um, yeah, good, work, good way to, to use this, this new method to authenticate the user with you, within your app. So the best practices for a great user experience are, um, yeah, the keys, to use the key store to check if the user authent uh, authenticated recently, so you don't have to show an authentication screen again. Um, and if the fingerprint sensor is available, I would all, always recommend it to to use it because the users like it a lot. And you, as you've seen, the um, adaption of the uh, secure lock screen just went from 50% to over 90%. And it's a quick and fast way of, of like securely authenticating. And if you don't want to like implement your own um, yeah, authentication uh, user interface and all this kind of stuff, you could always like use the confirm cr uh, device credential intent, which uh, you can fire and which looks like, yeah, 
um, this standard lock screen on your Android phone. So it's pretty cool there. So in the end, yeah, we have this uh, uh, short demo here. Yeah, I already showed to you, shown to you. Um, you can download it on GitHub, so you can play through all the different kinds of scenarios there, like um, that you don't need any user authentication if you want to just like store your information securely, create a, like a um, uh, certificate or whatever, and another one to like enable fingerprint um, or that the user has to use the fingerprint sensor to um, yeah unlock the app or another one with the like 15 second interval but it's completely custom customizable so you could also use like yeah I want to use 30 seconds or f up to five minutes or whatever um, yeah you need so you can see you can always like authenticate with the fingerprint if you have enrolled one so yeah the further reading I have here is like um, the, the developer training, uh, of course, and what's very interesting if you want to do a more like deep dive into the soul uh, uh, stuff, then it's the source.android.com security. Or already uh, also a great book is Android Security Internals by Ni Nikolai uh, Alenkov. Uh, unfortunately, this covers only like Android uh, 4.4 and lower, but it's definitely uh, a good read. So yeah, thanks everyone um, for, for coming today. And if you have any questions, you can always ping me like on Twitter or on Facebook. And yeah, that's it if you have any questions. Or simply ask the questions right now. Yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to say. Thank you, Frederick. <laughs> Who wants the microphone? Hi, thank you. Uh, first question is about uh, what about the solution from other uh, manufacturers like LG, I think they have something, and uh, for sure Samsung for the, uh, not for the devices before Marshmallow. Uh, do they have the same uh, um, patterns? Do they, do they use the same solutions? How, how to handle uh, all these uh, cases? Can we combine them? Yeah, actually, actually, unfortunately, I don't know like how this works like pre marshmallow because it's like, as you said, like manufacturer specific, and I actually I can tell you um, how this works on like Samsung or like an AG device, um, but yeah, since like marshmallow, the, uh, all the manufacturers should uh, like implement this uh, API, the fingerprint API, and, and the key store API, and in the end, yeah, it's up to the manufacturer to 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 implement all these security features. So yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's currently like API level 23 and up, so yeah. Um, did you see any, um, how fast is the performance of the GCA implementation? Because before Marshmallow, it was pretty slow, like orders of magnitude slower than if you used OpenSSL in NDK. Is this now changed? Do they now use hardware accelerated crypto or not? What's uh, the status? Um, actually, um, uh, I haven't looked like into into like comparing the speeds or like of the old and the new implementation, um, so I can't tell you that. But I talked um, to some people at this year's Google I/O, and they told me, yeah, they've done like a completely re rewrite of these um, like key store uh, daemon and 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 the key store API. So I think for me, uh, what I experience is it's pretty fast and, and and straightforward. So maybe you just try it out and yeah, check check back. Hi, uh, thanks for an amazing talk. Um, so basically my question is, um, so all those flows that require like fingerprint authentication, so um, so suppose we test them with, with UI tests with Espresso or something, are there really tools or any approaches to, to integrate those those screen flows into UI testing? Yeah, actually, um, I don't think that there are great like um, solutions to test like this authentication flow, but actually, uh, I have to admit that I haven't like looked into like specific testing uh, um, purposes there, so there may be. But actually, what I found there wasn't like to be very testable because it it like depends on 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 the on the phone and because we have like this deep integration with the hardware there there to um, to to encrypt and uh, the, the de decrypt um, the material and uh, like 
fetching it from the from the trust uh, execution environment. Um, so yeah, I, I unfortunately I can't tell you that because I haven't looked into it. Yep. Thank you.